All I can think about is all the grind that we put in, you know, the, 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 the fights, the competing in practice, the arguments, all of it pay off at the end when you turn into a family. 28 wins to do that. For most college basketball teams, 28 wins would mark a successful season, especially while breaking school records. But for the San Diego City College men's basketball team, 28 wins and breaking school records was not what they wanted to accomplish. It was just part of the process. After defending their home court against Riverside City College in the third round of the Southern California playoffs, the Knights secured their ticket to the Elite Eight tournament in San Francisco and were just three games away from achieving their ultimate goal. But the story doesn't begin here. How did the Knights arrive at this moment? And more importantly, how does a group of players become a family of brothers? I'm excited about uh, actually getting to play with this group of guys for the first time, really. Uh, there's like five or six returners maybe, but the rest of the dudes are, are completely new. So I feel like we have a great chance this year. Last year we had a good chance, but this year I feel like we're stronger everywhere around. Like every position we're deep. So if two guys get tired, two guys can go in and do the same thing that are just as good. Well, we definitely have a lot of talent at all positions. And what's nice is that we all, well, of course, we all get along well together and we all have the right work ethic. You see guys behind me in here getting shots up. Guys are afterwards getting shots up. You know, on the weekends, they're somewhere else getting shots up, working on their skills. So everyone here has the right mindset, the right attitude to, you know, to perform well. Right now, we're really eager to like play against someone else because we've been going at each other for like the past two, three months. And like we go to the weight room three, three days out of the whole week. We're in here at night, getting extra work in. You know, we're putting in new stuff every week. We're getting prepared. We had two tournaments over the summer. So it's really, it's really a grind right now. The intensity level of the preseason practices were the first highlights that revealed the year will be different. The Knights were making every bucket, every whistle, and every second count as the season was just weeks away from tip off. After going undefeated in the conference the year before and winning their fifth conference title for the program, the team was looking to continue their momentum. But even with a good core of sophomores, the Knights had some growing pains on the court. Our problem is, We'll have five guys on the court and only four of us are giving it 100%. But we need everybody to, to give 100, not 99, not 98. All of us, all five, all five kids got to give 100%. We need to put value on these preseason games because they do mean something. So I'm just trying to let these dudes know that it's not all fun and games. Like we got to take this, this stuff serious right now and it, it will affect where we end up in playoffs if we end up playing at home or away. And that kind of messed us up last year. We ended up playing an away game and lost by one for the playoffs. But if we would have been here, who knows, we could have maybe won that. The Knights fell short in the second round of the playoffs. And it was this early playoff exit in 2016 that fueled the team in their new season. And even with early season struggles before they played the first game, the players rallied around the idea of winning it all. Right now, I want to. I just want to get these guys to understand. We just need to focus on uh, playing as a team and being a family. When we do that, uh, it lends to uh, it lends to winning. So I feel like our end goal is to win a ship, but we're not worried about it right now. I could say, or at least I'm not. I'm trying to get these guys not to worry about it, get it off their minds, because we have a long season ahead of us. Well, I just want to get out there and compete as a team. I mean, we're battling with each other every day. It's kind of a love hate, you know. You're in, you're in separate teams in practice, but really you're still one team together. So you know, I'm ready to get out there and you know, battle with my brothers. Come
To begin their season, the Knights battled it out in the 11th annual San Diego City College Tournament. The team took care of business early on and defended their home court against Barstow College in the first round where their defense surged them to victory. The Knights recorded a total of 18 steals and played with high energy that eventually carried over into the second round against Citrus College. The Knights couldn't grab the steals like they did before against a team that also made the playoffs, but the Knights took care of business on the glass and recorded a total of 51 rebounds and had a strong effort from their bench to get the second win of the season. Them first two games, bro, to be honest, like, we knew we were gonna win those. Like, I, I just knew that no one matched up with us physically or, like, size and skill-wise. The Knights found themselves competing in the championship game of their tournament against Fullerton College, another team coming off a playoff loss the season before. Even though it was just the third game of the season, the battle between these two teams had a playoff-like atmosphere. San Diego started off poor, unlike the performances from before. The shots weren't falling, and turnovers in the first half didn't help with gaining any momentum leading into the second. But San Diego kept pushing and kept Fullerton College within striking distance. The Knights had their chances to take the lead, but could never catch a break. Even with a strong windmill dunk from freshman Robert McCoy, it wasn't enough to ignite a comeback. The Hornets eventually broke free and had a comfortable double-digit lead in the last three minutes of the game. But the good thing out of all this was that the loss against Fullerton College ignited a desire and a hunger for a team that unknowingly had the ingredients of a championship team. We hated Fullerton after that term because I got a technical foul, and then we slipped. We was winning at first, and we slipped, and they came back and beat us at home in our first tournament. You know what I'm saying? It was our tournament, and the next week, we knew that we wanted to get back at them. Coach goes um, into the locker room. He says, we're going to play them again. And he was just convinced of it, and he was just telling us, like, look, keep your heads high. Um, we'll bounce back, and we're going to play them again. Uh, at that time, at that moment in time, they were a better team than we were. And it was a great learning experience for our guys. Um, that following weekend, we were at uh, the Fullerton tournament, and our guys had a chip on their shoulder from that loss to Fullerton in the championship game of our tournament. And we wanted our revenge right there, right away, ASAP, as soon as possible. But we ended up making it to the championship of that game, and they had already lost, so we weren't able to play them again. And that kind of like, threw us for a loop because that's who we were expecting and that's who we wanted to play. And then we ended up losing again for the second championship in a row. Putting any team together is, is a, it's, it, it's a process, and, it, and, it, and it, you're exactly right, it takes time. It, it was 14 guys getting to know one another and, and getting to trust one another, and, and you have to trust before you pour your whole self into something. Um, and so that, that took time to develop. And it was a great learning experience for us to kind of teach these guys uh, every night Every possession of every game matters. Um, you can't take it lightly. You have to make the right play. At no point is there a time to necessarily be selfish. Uh, it's about the team. It's about the team goal. Giving up good shots for great shots. Um, and they learned how to do that. It wasn't anything that was necessarily given by any means. We were all on the same goal. We were just trying to put it all together as far as team chemistry. Just all fitting in with each other. You know, a lot of us was arguing with each other, fighting, you know, we had a lot of complications early on. And it was like, man, are we gonna be able to click together and come in? And I had texted Coach Mitch one day and I was like, you know, 
our team chemistry is not there. He was like, don't worry about it. It takes time. It's not going to happen like overnight. It takes time. So right there, I trusted in his word. And, you know, over time, it changed and clicked. The Knights started to find their identity as they continued to compete in tournaments. With some highlight plays and a few W's under their belts, the team started to come together. With a season high of 22 assists, 11 steals, and shooting nearly 65% from the field against LA Southwest, the Knights cruised to 118-78 victory and earned their first tournament title of the season. and the momentum carried over to the next tournament at Grossmont College. Everything was going down. They continued their strong shooting in their first two games to land once again in the championship game of the tournament. Going up against the host team, the Knights took care of business and continued their hot streak. Whether it was their defense getting the job done or executing their offense, San Diego cruised to another tournament title. You know, we got a few W's under our belt and our confidence was arising and you know we were I mean we were still hungry because who wants to you don't want to um, only win a couple games because we haven't won anything at that point yet so we still want to keep winning and keep winning so that was a big uh, help in our chemistry. Those tournaments brought us closer because we were also traveling so like we were going coming away from the school so we were going to different locations staying in hotels and even the hotel scene even brought us closer because like you know we'd be in each other's rooms we'd be clowning. We also came up with like our own lingo sometimes. Like we were always just, it would, it would be certain things that would bring us closer because we all just adjusted to like everybody's deal, not just our own deal. All right, the biggest thing that sparked us to win those tournaments was Coach Mitch, once again. Like, it was a gross amount of tournament where um, after the game, he came in in the locker room, like real energy, and came in and started knocking over things. And everybody's like, what was going on? He like he had so much energy, and, it, and we just knew that he believed in us, and he he was all in. So like right after that, we were like we got to be all in with him. And, you know, the, to me that's that's where a lot of our motivation came from right there. To see him go, do that. You can't even put Coach Mitch into one word. That dude is more. He's a coach. He's a father figure. He's a teacher. It's not like you would always any any basketball player or any player of any sport period would love to have a coach like Coach Mitch only because like. Not only does he like, you know, challenge you and not only does he like get on you when you like mess up and stuff like that, but all it is is just teaching you also how to be a man as well. So he comes out with more fire than anybody. So like when you see him coming out with that much fire, that much passion, and he's sweating, he's yelling, and he's so emotional, it makes you want to be like, man, I want to give this guy ten times as much as he's giving us. I want to give my heart to this guy, you know? Like, he can be... He's pretty crazy, but then again, that's the beauty of it. Like, any, any coach that's kind of, like, normal and kind of laid back, you know, you're not really, like, energized or kind of looking forward to coming to practice or talking because he's just that much different, you know? I wasn't here, wasn't part of the program when Mitch came on board, but he almost immediately started winning. Uh, you know, conference championships, uh, they went to the uh, top eight, I think, in 2009. And so it's been a consistently good team and in recent years it's gone to a great team. You know, and I think that's thanks to his leadership. He's got some fantastic assistant coaches and it's to the point where he's really a draw. You know, people are coming to us because of our successes and because of Mitch. And so, yeah, I, I'm very proud to work with Mitch. Don't tell him I said that. <laughs> <laughs> Heading into winter break, the Knights didn't stop their chemistry from developing. The team continued to be a family off the court and took part in Shop with a Jock, where all the athletic teams at San Diego City College took their time to help the community during the holidays. It was a really cool experience because I've never thought like I would be like a part of something like so wholesome, you know? It was a good experience too because I've never been a part of something like that. And then like, when it came to, you know, picking out my child, picking out the kid, you know, taking him around 
um, and shopping and everything like that, it was a cool experience because I've never done it before. Coach Mitch, actually, he does a great job of actually bringing us together and putting us in different like events and stuff like that to make us closer. So not only is it us, it's also Coach Mitch as well. After a couple weeks off during the holiday break, the Knights were looking to continue their winning ways into the new year. But in their last tournament before conference play, the Knights were defeated by Bakersfield College, marking their fifth loss of the season. Yeah, I think that was a game where we kind of maybe coasted in based off of a previous game success. But that was like kind of a wake-up call, like, man, like, we're losing to teams that we know we can beat, but we just coming out, just not prepared, we're not locked in. That game, we actually came in lots of days ago, think we were too good, especially me. I came in on the side just thinking, like, you know, that it's going to be a breeze. I just remember just the disappointment we all had. Like we just we just couldn't allow ourselves to do that again. Like we knew like we knew that team was a, they were a good team, but we knew that that wasn't the best team we've played. We've beaten better teams, and we shouldn't have lost the game, even though it was by what two points. Either way it goes, we shouldn't have lost that game. And like I just remember being in the locker room, just getting grilled. Coach Mitch came in, smacked the whole water bottle fountain thing and like really just ripped me apart, you know what I mean? And like that really told me like, yo, all right, I, I really am tripping, like this is my last year, I gotta get it together. I think we had such high expectations from ourselves. Uh, in the beginning of the season, we wanted to go undefeated. So by the fifth loss, we were like, okay, this is getting out of hand, like we're better than this, um, and we knew it. The team redeemed their loss in the tournament by winning the next two. It wasn't the way they wanted to begin the new year, but they moved forward and were ready to start their conference games. And like our coach would just tell us like, we're getting there, we're just not there yet, but just keep working with it, keep being open, keep being aggressive, stick with the program. And I feel like once everybody got locked in, we're, we were unbeatable and that's what happened. Like we started running through teams and just like having fun with it, having fun with it. got to a point sometime you know in January early January where all of a sudden the guys truly cared more about each other than they did themselves i mean every guy was selfless there was i don't remember a time after that moment in January where a guy was concerned with his own playing time i mean you couldn't you couldn't see it in his eyes you couldn't see it in, in the way he carried himself and his body language you guys were coming in and out of the game and they were they were celebrating each other with zero concern for themselves and their, their own accolades. And one day, like a couple days at practice, it's, it, was, it, it became more to us to like, we only go as far as we go as a team. So uh, people started making sacrifices like uh, on and off the court. Like uh, our chemistry off the court was, was crazy. Every day we're with each other, like no matter what, it could be with this group of guys or with this group of guys or all of us at, all of us together. So I feel like that was, that was a key to our success because we weren't afraid to tell each other how it was on the court. Win after win after win. The Knights were looking unbeatable against the teams in their conference. But even with a six game win streak, the team wanted it to be known that it wasn't all just luck that got them their wins. And for Mesa College, they happened to be in their way to prove it. We definitely became family. 
because that that specific game we were everybody wore Jordans, so everybody was already clicking. Everybody was family. We was brothers after that. We were for real brothers after that. So you know, it was fun. That was a fun time. It was a real fun time. Whether it was the shoes or not, the Knights put on a show for the home crowd, and more importantly, showed that they're more than just a basketball team. You could see every guy on the bench is like jumping over the bench and throwing towels up and celebrating as it's happening. No, no concern with how much playing time they were getting. They were just celebrating one another. I just know my teammates have confidence in me to um, do what I do. So uh, it was a, it was a great play actually. That just that play specifically and the reaction on the bench just really shows like our how strong our bond was and love for each other and excitement we had for each other every time somebody on the court did well. Crazy, yeah, it's crazy how athletic Rob is, man. He's like a freaking beast. I don't know. He's gifted, he's gifted. Every, every time he jumps in the air, everybody goes crazy. You know? Every time, we already know it's gonna be something amazing every time he jumps, so. I think everyone wanted to see everyone um, succeed. Everyone wanted to see everyone shine. And so anytime there was a big play, didn't matter who it was, didn't matter what time of the game it was, everyone on the bench was going crazy. really put the work in during practice hours, after practice hours, um, and we were just so hungry just to win for each other. Like we want to win for each other, not for, not for ourselves, but for each other. And uh, at, at that time, any team we played just caught us at a bad moment for them because we were just on fire at the time. I don't want this to sound arrogant. It wasn't a surprise to me. You know, and what I mean by that is I, I always felt from day one um, through our recruiting process that we had all the pieces. Now, having all the pieces doesn't mean you're gonna win a game. You know, it, it's a different, different animal to get, again, a young group of men to kind of come together for a common goal. So many times in team sports, you have you know, individual accolades that motivate a lot of guys. Um, so it wasn't a surprise to me we were in the position, um, especially with, with the staff that we have, um, the players that we have. They truly love coming to the gym and working. I mean, they, they would compete every single day they'd come into the gym and, and, and look forward to competing. They, they'd be pissed off when they lost and they'd be celebrating and running around the gym and taunting each other when they won. I mean, I talk about practice against each other. That's just who they were as characters. And then I had such a phenomenal staff that every day we would, we would talk about whether we won by 30 or, or, or had an amazing practice or not. Our, my coaches were always coming to me as a coach, you know, we, we're really not very good at this. We need to improve on this. This guy needs to get better at this. I mean, so the, the staff uh, was locked in. We spent endless hours in the gym. Every Tuesday and Thursday night, we, we go from practice. Some people went to class, go get something to eat, come right back to the gym for hours, getting skill work and individual work in. And Every night we're putting up 400, 500 shots, so it's like, I mean, not every night, but like every night we were putting extra hours in the gym, so uh, seeing that hard work actually paying off and it was just, it's a great feeling to know that when you put your mind to something, you can do whatever it is. The awards and success of the players was a moment to relish for their hard work since January. With playoffs just a few weeks away, head coach Mitch Charlins was awarded coach of the year for the sixth time since joining the program in 2004 and sophomore point guard Darian McLean was awarded Conference Player of the Year. McLean averaged the team's best in scoring, assists, and steals. It's, again, not surprising, but it is not by accident. It's because of the hard work of the team, the coaches. You know, I see them during practice. I stop by and watch for a few minutes. And you can see as the season goes on that they just, just get better and better. And gosh, um, you know, Wonder Smith, Romario also were awarded um, PCAC first team honors. So it's to see that it's it's really great. Romario Wilson, uh, first team all conference guy coming off the bench. That's unheard of. I had four year university coaches uh, at all levels almost being amazed that wait, wait a minute, you got a first team all conference guy come off your bench? And that wasn't anything that we promoted him, that was other coaches being like, this guy could go, you know, he could play. Um, so those individual accolades, you know, where guys set goals and 
as a former athlete myself, that's what you have to do to be successful. You set little goals, you know, you don't, you don't get caught up on them, but you like to do certain things through the course of the season. And I think a lot of those things just kind of came to these guys because they played the right way. They shared the ball, very unselfish, make the extra pass. Um, and that allowed a lot of individuals to have a lot of success here and there throughout the season. You know, everybody, of course, you know, people had their own like playing time. Everybody shined in their own way. And everybody um, kind of did their part like when they needed to and knew like and knew their place. So yeah, I can say that when, when Coach won Coach of the Year, when Darian won Player of the Year, that just done nothing like, yo, like once again, you know, we kept being hungry, it kept getting more hungry, and it was just like, what's next? Like let's let's keep going. We can just keep stacking up these awards, keep doing what we've been doing, and let's see how far we can go. The Knights were rolling in W's on and off the court through the months of January and February. And while riding a 12-game win streak and going undefeated in the conference, they were crowned conference champions for the second straight year. I wouldn't say huge, I would say it was a step because we knew our end goal what it was. Like we knew we were able to get win the league. That was like a small step in in order to do that. We knew we were gonna blow out the league. The problem was us not slipping up, having any slip ups, being perfect. That was our problem. Like we, were, we wanted to be perfect so that when we go into the playoffs, we wouldn't have any slip ups. It also marked the sixth time the basketball team brought home the conference title. But even with the success, the Knights weren't satisfied with the results. Definitely felt some, some pressure to, to go undefeated in conference because of the previous teams. Um, and so once we finally did it, it felt good because it was like, that was a checkpoint we wanted to check off. Obviously it wasn't the ultimate goal, but it definitely felt good to hit that point. And then now we can look forward to playoffs and, and going to get a championship. You know, last year we fell short right in the beginning. So this year I just wanted to go as far as we can. You know, uh, we had conversations like three weeks before playoffs started. And we would talk to everybody like, yo, is everybody want to win? Like, are we all in? And everybody agreed like, yeah, we're all in. So. You know, from right there, we knew, like, there on out, we got to give everything we got. Can't leave nothing behind. From their success throughout the season, the Knights earned the fifth seed and got home court advantage against Mount San Antonio. And even though it was the playoffs, it was the same story for whoever faced the Knights. That it was no winner go home, it was just win. That's all, I, that's all we talked about was winning. We never talked about ifs, ands, or what happens, or it was just, just win. That's all the conversation was. Those guys were locked in for 40 minutes, and that's, that's very special. Um, you know, as a coach, a lot of times you try to find ways to motivate guys, and these guys were motivated by hard work and winning, and that was special. San Diego defended their home court and got the second round win. And as if they didn't have enough motivation, the victory added more fuel for the team to get the job done in the third round of the playoffs against Riverside City College. We were more hungry and we kept our foot on the gas pedal because it was like, why settle for what San Diego, like what San Diego City has been doing through, throughout the years? And like, we feel like this team right here was like, yo, like, I really feel the chemistry like, like deeply, like as far as like we can get, we can do it big, we can do it big and not, and we were telling the coach in the beginning of the season, we were like, yo, like this team right here feels like we can really get the job done. And um, yeah, we just never took our foot off the gas. And in the driver's seat was sophomore point guard, Darian McLean, who made sure the season didn't come to an end in front of their home crowd. Three after three after three, McLean couldn't miss. McLean scored a total of 21 points 
and went six for seven from three-point territory in the first half. Hey, I mean, I've seen him do it before. <laughs> maybe not, maybe not in a game like that, but definitely in practice, definitely just after practice, just I've seen him get into that mode where he just doesn't miss. It feels like once he sees one tray ball go in, they're all going in. So he's seen that first one go in and it was over. Just so happened that, you know, you want to send two to the ball, great, we're swinging it. The next man's going to be in a position to be successful. And Darian just happened to be in that position a lot and made plays. Um, it, by no means was it anything that was forced. If you watch that highlight, I mean, it just comes to him. It's not anything at any point in that game that he forced a shot or a possession or a bucket. You know, it was just what happened. And it seemed like his hot hand was contagious as the team nearly shot 60% from the floor. We had two other guys with 16 points, two other guards, 16 points. One guy, I believe, had eight rebounds. Another guy had five or six assists. You know, we had other guys that were contributing in that game. It I remember getting triple team, you know. I have a picture and there's four jerseys touching me from the orange team. So like, if they're coming down that hard, you know, it's open season for our shooters. Things never got better for Riverside City College in the second half. The Knights continued to light up the scoreboard and with 15 minutes left, the Knights were up 74-44. Against Mount Sac and then against Riverside, I mean, it, we hit our stride right there. It was crazy that we, that we were able to play our best basketball you know, in those rounds of the playoffs. McLean finished the game with a career high of 39 points after going 8 for 10 from downtown. Darian, man. I love playing with Darian. He's so special, man. I'm, I'm dribbling, I'm dribbling, and I'm just looking for him. Because every time he get it, he let it go and just, it's just knocked down, man. I love playing with him. It was a great last game at City, man. That's all I can say. It's been a great experience. Uh, I love the coaching staff, love my team. It's been, the fa it's been my favorite year so far. With the 113-81 victory, the Knights punched their ticket to the Elite Eight tournament and we're now just three games closer to achieving their ultimate goal. Man, we're going to get it, we're coming. We're, we're gonna work hard every day this week. It's just gonna come. And we, we all believe in each other and it's, and it's man, it's been, it's crazy, it's crazy. Think about is all the grind that we put in, you know, the, 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 the fights, the competing in practice, the arguments, all of it pay off at the end when you turn into a family. 28 wins to do that. Man, I'm really excited, man. We've been working all season. I've been here for three years now. This is what I've been dreaming for. It's just really, a, really, really, really appreciating. Like, we really all, we all worked hard, played hard tonight. Just got the dub, came out strong. All I can say is if we play our game, if we play our brand of basketball, how Coach Mitch has trained us, how Coach Mitch has prepared us, I think we'll be I think we'll be perfect. I don't think no team in the state can mess with us if we play our game. And what's the number one strength you think the team has right now that's going into the, into the next round? Our defense and our depth. You know, we, we, we're super deep, we got good chemistry, and, and we love playing with each other. Everybody loves each other and we play great deep. We, we, may, we suffocate people on the defensive end, and it shows tonight in the 81 to 113 victory. Let's go, man. We here, man. We here, baby. We coming, baby. We coming. We coming. We coming.
right, March Madness is in full effect for one San Diego basketball team. That team, the San Diego City College team. The Knights are in the Elite Eight. In a state playoff game last night, SDCC beat Riverside 113-81 to behind a career-high 39 points for Darian McLean. That's 14 straight wins for the team. Their overall record is now 28-5. and So in the state quarterfinals, SDCC will play Yuba College. That game is Thursday night in Livermore. The Knights are now three wins away from the state championship. Of course, like we all knew that, yeah, like we can get there, we can get to the Elite Eight, we can do it. But then again, we stayed focused on the on the motive and the job. And then once we got to the Elite Eight, it was like, oh man, another big step. Like now we're even way more hungry. Like our stomachs got bigger. Like, you know, let's keep filling it up, keep filling it up, let's keep doing it. We knew that there was only one other Knights team that had been to the actual state tournament. And so once we made that happen, we just felt good going up to the state tournament that, you know, now we can just take it further than any other team in San Diego's done. You talk about your goal so much and you finally start seeing it happening. It just is, it gives you goosebumps because you don't know what's going to happen, but you always want to stay ready and prepared. An old coach, a friend of mine, you know, told me, he's like, Mitch, you know, you've been there before. Don't, don't just be happy to go there. Go, go win it. And so, you know, that's a cliche. Everybody's heard that before, but it re that really resonated with me. So I wasn't, I think in years past, I was worried about the letdown that the kids might have if they didn't get it done. And so I, I didn't concern myself with that. I was just all in on the moment. I said, no, we're, guys, we're going to win this. And I wanted them to have that mindset. But in the state quarterfinals, their mindset to win was immediately tested. Throughout the season, the Knights were hungry to win, but they weren't the only ones. They shoot it over 40% from three. About five players that average in double figures. Early steal. Back the other way. Laying it up and laying it in for Yuba. Josh Dat. Yuba will try to start to pour it on early here. About a minute in. She from deep. That's good. Here's the tell, Michael. <laughs> Ruaro, make that nine early. 11 0 off the bat for Yuba. To start the state tournament, we're down 11-0 to Yuba. I mean, welcome to the lead eight, you're down 11-0. Hard drive blocked away by Shive. The Knights received the early playoff punch from Yuba College, but after a timeout, the team settled down and started to find the basket. Freshman guard Wonder Smith tied the game at 20 with a big three. The Knights were able to erase their 11th point deficit and slowly found their groove as a family on the court. And with a big three-pointer from freshman forward Robert McCoy, San Diego took the lead. And continuing his hot performance from the previous game, sophomore Darian McLean also found his shot and helped the Knights come back and take the lead going into the half. They would take a two-point lead. There's a foul call. Three-point shot is good and a foul on Jackson. And Darian McLean is unconscious from deep. With only a five-point lead, the Knights knew it wasn't going to be an easy road to achieve their ultimate goal, but unfortunately for Yuba College, the Knights were not intimidated by the challenge. To be honest, we faced that type of adversity all year in practice, in other games. Um, so when we were down, we didn't, we never really worried. We just like just pick it up. That's all we gotta do is just pick it up. You know what I'm saying? We came out lackadaisical, yeah, in, in, in the first game, but we always we just knew, like, yo, it does not matter. We just got to get a couple buckets, get a couple stops together, and we're back in it. The tables quickly turned for the 49ers. Steal after steal after steal, and San Diego found themselves up by 17. Yuba College couldn't find their rhythm and turned the ball over a total of 22 times, which the Knights converted into 30 points. Another turnover, it's a steal. Sophomore guard Marcus Brumsey recorded three steals, and McCoy had five with ten defensive rebounds. And the struggles continue point blank for Yuba. McCoy back the other way. Has it tapped out of his possession by Ruaro. But and with a team high of 23 points from McLean, the Knights got the 85-69 victory to advance to the state semifinals. These guys didn't disappear. You know, it's very easy to come in beating on your chest, but to come out, go down, and then to continue to fight back to stay in that game and end up winning was big time. Coach didn't say win or lose, enjoy it. Nah, he was like, win or go home. Like, you either win, you continue to play, or you go home and sit at home. So like, he gave us reality. So, you know what I'm saying? We, we knew that, like, we had to win. 
And because we lost, it's going to be miserable, all that. So, you know, coach, he always was intense. It was never like, oh, if you win, if we lose, it's okay. We never had that mentality. For the first time in team history, the Knights were in the Final Four. The team was just one game away from the state championship game, but in order for them to move closer to their ultimate goal, the Knights had to get past the defending state champions, City College of San Francisco. And an early technical versus Yuba, but was able to rebound and play very well. Inside for two, and that's a nice score for Alex Wilborn. San Francisco off the mark thus far. Copeland from deep, step back three. One on one versus Stedman. Hook shot, gets a man up in the air. Hook shot, good to go for Alex Wilborn. Yonescu hesitates, fires from three and buries. It was clear that both teams wanted to get to the state championship game, but throughout the course of the first half, it was clear one team was struggling. That's short. Long the Knights were not in the same rhythm from three-point territory, which made it hard for them to grab the lead. The only thing keeping the Knights in the game was their defense. But in the last minutes of the first half, San Diego's defense began to break down from an offensive surge from the Rams. It was a taste of their own medicine, as the Rams were the ones knocking down threes and finding the basket with ease. In a matter of minutes, San Francisco broke out with a 10-point lead going into the half. Uh, but my biggest concern with our group was toughness. You know, are we going to be tougher for those teams that come out and want to take a shot at us? Are we going to be able to answer the bell every time? And it was just like, okay, this is a, the, the biggest deficit we've ha probably had at halftime the whole year. Like, how are we going to come back from this? Takes it back to Copeland, wide open three, trailing the... The Knights came out flat in the second half and the Rams continued to drain their shots, which gave them a comfortable double-digit lead early in the second. I came out after halftime and we were down, and I was like, I remember looking to whoever was on my right and left, I want to say maybe it was Romario, and I was like, damn, bro, shit's getting ugly. The defending state champions had us down 15 points, and our guys, they didn't get rattled, they just, said, all right, we, we got to make a couple plays. The shots were not falling, but the defense for the Knights began to tighten up. A steal by freshman guard Robert Taylor gave Darius Lee a surge to the basket. Free throw no good. Wilson fighting for the carom. Darius Lee couldn't knock down the free throw, but with a surge of energy on the defensive side, the Rams turned it over, and freshman guard Wonder Smith took it all the way back for the layup. Turn over the other way, behind the back dribble, left-handed layup, up and good, Wonder Smith. Deficit in the single digits now, 54-45, here come the Knights. Suddenly now, the Knights had life. With back-to-back -back steals and layups, San Diego had the momentum, and the comfortable lead the Rams had slowly disappeared. The defense made their stops, and sophomore guard Marcus Brumsey, with a big rebound, took it the length of the court to put the Knights within five. Lays it up, lays it in, look! Brumsey's got a whole different speed that we saw there. He literally pulled away from traffic. It was the final spark the Knights needed to get over what seemed to be a never-ending uphill battle. The Knights started to find their rhythm. They were forcing turnovers and had a total of eight steals in the second half which ultimately brought them back in it. The big thing with us was our defense was like, got us going. Like our offense was, you know, that was our party, but like our defense started the party. So we got our momentum going. And then once you get that going, we get baskets, we score, we're a fast team in transitions. And once the Knights were back in, the shots started to fall. Again, it kind of just goes back to to the brotherhood and how everyone believed in each other and how everyone wanted to see each other succeed. And um, it just is like a momentum builder. It's like a snowball. Like as soon as like one person starts get starts going, then the next person starts going, then the next person starts going. With a big three-pointer, Wonder Smith gave San Diego the lead. Fire from long range and hit! Oh my goodness! Wonder Smith is second big three in the second half. But the game wasn't over just yet. It was a seesaw battle in the last two minutes, but Smith was in the zone. There he was again, 
with the steal to tack on another two points. Collins loses the handle. Smith has it for the night. Smith in from the left. Left-handed layup is good. Mike just do it. But San Francisco came right back and put the game within one. Copeland, long three. That's good. Wow. Copeland now with six threes in the game. He has back to one point. Trying to get it to McLean and a foul called on Witt. Coming over the back there, so it'll be McLean again. 5.8 seconds remaining. Yeah, you should go right to the instant classic here. Yeah. So you Depending get, on what we see in the next six seconds. So situationally, if you're San Diego, the question is, do you foul with the three-point lead with the free throw in, or do you switch and invert your defense and force them off the three-point line? They're going to show some pressure with 5.8. They get it to right. Can't afford to wait. Down to four seconds. Wright hesitating. Is it two seconds? They gave the foul. Smart play. He might get it a one tip. Wright's free throw is good. Okay, so mission accomplished. Now you have to miss on the left side. You, you don't want to go to the side of Wilborn. Misses high. They try to keep it alive. Still fighting, and that'll do it. San Diego City down 15 in the second half. The Knights came back and stole the victory against the defending state champions. It wasn't pretty, but with their 79-77 victory, San Diego punched their ticket to the state championship game. When it, we got down, when nobody nobody dropped their heads, nobody lowered their heads, it was all positive, and like I think our fa family like mentality like really stuck to it, like telling everybody, like boosting everybody up, confidence. It's just it was all about our confidence, and we knew at that point nobody could stop us. But these guys answered the bell, you know, and that, that was a very special thing. Last year, I didn't really get to enjoy the experience of even going up to San Fran, so it was like, oh, we're, we just beat the defending champions, and now we're in the championship. You know what I mean? It was like, thank God, you know, that we pulled it through. You know, everybody that played hard that game, man, it was crazy. It was crazy. The Knights arrived to what they had dreamed about from the beginning of the season. After two playoff wins, San Diego City College found themselves going up against a team that they had their eye on since November, the team that gave them their first loss of the season, Fullerton College. I don't think it could have been scripted any better in the sense of coming full circle. And they beat us by like, I think maybe 10, and that kind of was like the fuel to our fire for the rest of the season because we weren't expecting to lose ever on our home court. That was our only, our, our only loss. And Ever, ever since we found out we, they were in the Elite Eight just as well, that's the team we wanted to play from the beginning. Like, we've always wanted to play them ever since they took our own tournament championship. The crazy part about it, our coach, when we first lost them, our coach said, we will see them in the, we will see them in the playoffs. And it just happened, we seen them in the utmost championship of all. Man, like, we were so, I didn't go to bed until about like six in the morning. I was so like amped and hyped. So there's a bunch of emotion. Everybody was locked in, ready to go. That is a pretty move down low by Wilborn. Our favorite inbounds play of the tournament. <laughs> Not working this time. Operated by a South School. Still a 5 0 lead for the Knights. McLean working the pick and roll to Wilborn, lays it in. That is textbook right there, and Lauderdale's going to have to adjust. Against Uber, they went down, I believe, 12 0. Yep. Hornets now into the zone defense. McLean, McLean. with a long three. And the Knights? are really just beating Fullerton in every aspect of the game right now. They're executing better, they are shooting it better. Unlike their previous two games, San Diego got off to a 10-2 start. The Knights were in the rhythm offensively, from downtown and inside the paint. It quickly looked like things were going to get out of hand fast, but the Hornets were able to stay with it. I couldn't sit in the stands, I had to be walking around. I stood up on the top and I paced back and forth and I just, that, that's the kind of nervousness I get. Not. Not nervous that they're going to to not win, but just I'm so excited, I think, more than nervous at that point. The atmosphere was ridiculous, but it was a lot of emotion, like a lot of a lot of scrapping, a lot of hard calls. There was a lot of chirping, you know, it was the, it was the game within the game, you know, and them hitting shots and coming by talking about we're going to get our ring, you know, so there was all this added motivation that 
led to it courtside and being in that moment for it to be just such an amazing experience. Shooter with a high bounce. We've seen the strap in play many times. Yeah. Reese to the bucket, gets a screen from Ross. That one blocked up top. Back the other way we come. Here's McCoy in transition. That's going to be a block. Oh, gosh. That's a terrible call. He didn't take it in the chest. In the first 28, 30 minutes was a complete dogfight, honestly. Like, we were just going back and forth with him. And the Hornets were able to inch their way back in the game. And it didn't help that the Knights recorded eight turnovers in the first half, which allowed Fullerton College to eventually find the rhythm. Travel. Oh, no. Wow. Hence their fouling problem. But they do block quite a few shots. Yeah. Oh, a cheap one for Ross yeah. down low. Cuts it to a one-point lead. When it came to halftime and we saw where the we saw where the score was, we just didn't want to go home like with the L. So all we kept doing was like we would have players come in there, we'd be screaming at each other, like saying, like, yo, this is this is it. Like that's act like we didn't come this far, like for nothing, you know? And it was just more so it was so euphoric because you can see everybody's emotion. You can see everybody's like eyes pretty big, Coach Mitch locked in, all of our coaches locked in. It was just it was just like, no, we're not going home with the L's. In a crowd, out to Anderson, around a box, he'll fire for three in and out. Lauderdale on the offensive glass, back up, yes, and a foul. We were very confident coming in that teams might be able to hang around for 15 minutes, they might be able to hang around for 20, 30 minutes, but when it came down to that 40 minute game, um, we felt that we were more prepared coming into games that it would be tough for teams to play with us for 40 minutes. In the second half, the battle continued with both teams trading buckets, but this time, the Hornets had the edge. Ball by Reese to tap that one out. Hornets once again looking for the lead. McCoy picks up Fox in a switch. Fox with the runner oh. high off the glass. What a finish. We got one to go. That's probably, stretch. yeah, and immediately San Diego into the run and jump. Reese in the open floor. Three on two inside. That's Ross with an nifty touch from 12 feet. And McCoy, violation on the inbounds. It's going to go back to the Hornets. This could be a four point run here after a tie ball game at 38. We have a timeout taken by San Diego City College. The Knights, Coach Mitch Charles, seeing that this one possibly getting away from such a crucial juncture in this ball game. Fullerton is a real good team. I said that since we first lost them. I knew they were, they were an elite team in California. The reason why we went down, we were having a little nervous feelings. Transition with numbers all the way to the rack to Ross, puts it up, Reese with the follow. 7 0 run. Keep an eye, the whole time keep in mind, Kenny Barnes on the bench for the Hornets with foul trouble. That is not a good sign for San Diego when that gets corrected. That's a miss. And now the Hornets with a chance to go up by double digits on a three. Fox will bring it up. Ward's off the defender, he'll lay it up. No good, tapped out. Lauderdale now with it out to Fox for three. Another one, no, it's off the back iron. He gets his own rebound, though. Another possession for the Hornets. Guys, the Hornets are winning every loose ball right now. Right now, City looks tired. City College, San Diego. I'll have to push off their offensive on Fox. He's done that a lot this weekend. I want to say that's the first time it's been called. We were down, I think, seven or eight points with five to play. And our guys, the same attitude. They, they weren't rattled. They didn't start pointing the finger. They weren't protecting their own egos. Like, it, that, that's what, you know, when things don't go your way, that's when you see self-preservation come out. And our guys didn't do that. They were, they were more together. They were more together in those moments. Games go up and down, so as time went on, they went up, we went down, just, and we knew at that point it was, it was time to go. It was like we remembered what happened in the past. So uh, throughout our huddles, we were talking about, like, we want this, we, we need it. In the middle, I'm bringing everybody together. I said, we're not going to lose. I promise you, we're not gonna lose this game. And then, you know, once every once one person started getting into it, then I started getting into it, then we just started picking each other up. And then from there, it's just all about playing basketball, knowing what we had to do, and just basically having guts. Down by five, and the Knights found their spark from a big block by freshman Robert McCoy. Here we go for the Knights. McCoy brings it out to McLean, wide open from three, yes! Darian McLean gets it to a two-point deficit. We've talked about it. The shot-blocking ability of the Knights comes through again. A couple of minutes ago, this was a seven-point lead. It appeared to be all Hornets. 
what really helped was me and Darian just having that connection as we did. Like he kind of fed off, we kind of fed off each other. And as you can see, the last couple plays were just me and him. Like he made a three, then I hit a three. The Yale hit the lead back to the Knights. It's a 6 0 run. 3 20 to go in the final. He's got Wilborn in the switch. That's exactly what he wants. Goes to the baseline, gets Wilborn in the air. Wide open, Dylan Reese from the corner. The lead back to the Hornets. Time out. And with the state championship title on the line, every play, every whistle, and every dribble suddenly had more meaning as the clock slowly ticked down. McLean drives the lane, tries to kick it back out. Wonder Smith freed up Noah McLean. Great closeout by Fox. Taylor drives the lane up and in. It's tied at 51. 11 seconds. No timeout called. Here comes Anderson. Are we smelling overtime? Hornets don't want it to travel. Four seconds to go. Here comes another timeout. A chance for San Diego to win it. We have four seconds left, man. What are we going to do? And we couldn't take it out on our side of the court. So it was like, ah, oh, we got to get the court down in, in four seconds. Coach drew up the play. We, we know that Darian's the fastest guy on our team, um, you know, top to bottom. So we knew he'd get up there fast. 4.1 seconds is a lot of time when it's just going one direction. So my goal and our team's goal was to get as close to the rim as possible to try to draw a foul. We just set it up to where if he gets in trouble, he has relief. So. It was set up to where we, Wonder, Rob, we're just the outlet pass. I was sitting down on the bench at the time, we clicked arms. And we just like, come on, yo, we gonna pull this through. You know, I inbounded to him, I just watched him dribble up the court and... In my head, I'm like, oh, this dude finna get a shot off. I knew he was gonna get a shot off. But like, I don't know if he was gonna get a good shot or a bad shot, so... It takes about, I wanna say about six dribbles. I'm just over here looking the whole time, like, what's gonna happen, what's gonna happen? They're going to take the ball out of McLean's hands, likely with the double team. There McClain, it is. McLean, here's the double hole drive all the way to the basket, flicks it up on the rim. That's it. San Diego with the upset at the buzzer. Darian McLean. Oh, my goodness. The celebration is on for San Diego City. Will Cowan, what a game. What started as a team goal before the season began became a reality in the last 4.1 seconds of the season. And with the buzzer beater victory, the Knights found themselves in the history books as the first San Diego team to win it all in 66 years. Uh, when I got the ball, it was like it was just a wide open lane to, to the rim, so it was one of the shots I just had to make. And it's just an unbelievable feeling, and it's crazy that it was for the state title. To be honest, I didn't know if he was going to drop it off or what because he was kind of like, I couldn't even see him to be honest because it was oh, some people and then I just see him like throw it up and then I just see the ball, I see the net move and I'm just like, ah, it went in and everything inside of us, like everything, like it just dropped and then it went drop and then it went back up like volcano and just erupted all of us on the court and it was just tears from there of happiness and like, yo, we did it. Like we did it. I never even thought it would be that situation, like hitting a game winner and that, like I thought we were gonna either win or it's gonna be a loss. It's never just like game winner. That's crazy. And it's crazy that it's me. I mean, it feels good. And couldn't have, been there, couldn't have done it without my team, you know? We all stuck together and we made sacrifices this year to get to where we needed to be. Man, it was just, a blessing to see all that hard work pay off, you know. Great feeling. Uh, it's really indescribable to just win something, no matter what level you're at. To just win a championship is just one of the greatest feelings ever. They believed far, far sooner than I think the staff did. I mean, the first day they showed up and they're like, yeah, we're winning a state title. I mean, you know, they're, they're so young and naive, they don't know how hard it is. You know, they, they believed from day one. And the coaching staff, we. You know, we, we were all players and we've all been coaching for a long time, so we're like, all right, it, it takes a lot. And then it also takes some luck and it takes some good fortune. It takes a lot of things. Um, they, they believe from day one. The guys hung together. They, nothing slowed them down. They, if they fell back and fell behind a little bit, they would bounce back and really never lost their composure. So um, it was fantastic to see it. Um, well-deserved. 
all the all the five losses every time, even though it'd be a short drive from um, wherever tournament in San Diego back to here, it would always feel like the longest drive ever because the coaches would be so mad, we would be so down on ourselves. So if we were to have lost from from San Francisco all the way back down to San Diego, it would have just been brutal. We've been counted out throughout the whole season, like even with the rankings, like we were ranked eighth seed going into the playoffs. And just to be number one, like nobody ever thought San Diego City was gonna be number one, finish up top. After we received our awards and everything and got back into the van, it was just party central the whole way back. State champs, San Diego City College Lions! Get over here, Darian. Woo, nice. Okay, so they gave you the ball, Darian, because apparently you're kind of fast. How did, it, how did that feel, man? I mean, you're living the dream. That's what everybody oh. wants, to do that buzzer beater for like, a champion. Do you champion. think about that at night when you go to bed? <laughs> oh like, my is God. it replay it over It replays and over. over and over, over and over. Isn't that incredible? Man. My name is Nate Edwards from Spring Valley, New York. Yeah. And you're, you're holding the trophy. What's it like to hold a championship trophy? Uh, it's, it's, just, it's just everything. It's just all the ups and downs, just just everything. It's just, it still ain't even really hit me that we stay champs yet. Because once it hits me, it's going to really hit me that it's over with them. Like they said, we brothers. Like when it comes to cooking, eating, no matter what it is, we do it all together. Like, because we, we, we love each other. Like, ain't nobody else I would rather go through this with than, than these 15 guys. It was uh, so incredible. Such an incredible year. And, and such an incredible journey with these, with this group of guys. They, they were so special. Uh, can't describe it. A week after winning the state championship title, the Knights basketball team found themselves back in the gym, but for a different reason. Hosted by a local sports organization called Ball City SD, the Knights were out in the community helping young basketball players learn the fundamentals of the game. My favorite part was when we were doing, um, we, were trying to, we were trying to keep our balance when we were trying to shoot. And while the kids snapped some pictures with the state champions, they also developed their skills on the court and learned the importance of being an all-star student in the classroom. Why am I talking in circles? Okay. You gotta do the, you gotta take care of the foundation first. I think it was a real good opportunity to, to come here and teach the youth on how to make it, you know, not just in basketball, but in life as well, too. And, uh, you know, because it makes me think about my younger days and how I had older kids tell me what to do. So, you know, it was a real fun opportunity to come in, to, you know, to return that. Yeah, it was cool to visit and see the kids in San Diego, have their parents take the time out of their Sunday to have them come down here and learn with us and our coaching staff. It's pretty cool. They, I didn't think people seen City College as as, as leaders and, and, and role models, so it's pretty cool to have kids look up to us. It was really cool seeing when they made the the, the final shot in the championship. That was my favorite part. It was awesome. Yeah, it's it's kind of cool being able being able to go from the one being yelled at to being able to do the yelling. So it's kind of cool. So I can see myself coaching when I get older. You know, after I get done playing. Right now, it's time to get a scholarship, though, so.
Following their championship season, the Knights went back into their school routine. Focused on graduating and training for next year, the days quickly turned into weeks. Everything seemed fine until one morning, the morning of April 18th, Uh, it was devastating. It was absolutely devastating. Uh, getting a call on the way into work at about 7 a.m. Uh, it, it was tough. It was tough news to swallow. That day was horrible. I got the text from coach and I just like sat there in front of my phone for like 20 minutes or something. Just didn't know what to do. It was probably about 7 in the morning and coach sends a group text to the team like basically saying like, yo, Nate is gone. Everybody get to the gym and let's, and we gotta talk about this. And everybody was just in shock. I'm like, what the fuck do you mean Nate's gone? You know what I'm saying? I'm like, like, yeah, he killed himself. I'm like, what? The family lost one of their brothers. They lost a champion. Nate Edwards was gone. A victim of an illness that turns the brightest days into the darkest. The dark thoughts and pain from inside slowly crushed the life of a vibrant and caring father, brother, cousin, and son. It just hurt because he was always like the person to me that was so positive. And like, whenever I had a problem, he helped me through it. And I just feel bad because I can't help him do this. I wished that I, I could have talked to him one more time, and and then so I thought about, you know, the the pain he must have been in to 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 do that, you know, to take his own life. He must have been in incredible pain. Um, so I thought about him being in that pain, and I thought then I, then I thought about his his family and and his his young sons who adored him. So dealing with all of that was was heartbreaking to 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 come to terms with the with that kind of loss. You know, uh, I was devastated because uh, you know Nate was definitely one of the most outgoing people on our team, and you know, most vibrant people, person I ever met, you know, so when I found out the news, I was just devastated, like, you know, I couldn't believe it, you know, it, it was hard, it was hard, it was a hard time for all of us, you know, it was really emotional in the gym, everybody was in tears. Yeah, it was, it was tough, it was, especially just like the um, unawareness, uh, no signs or anything, so that, that was, that was really tough on us. Especially all, the love we have for each other is real tough. I couldn't believe it at first because then again, not only was Nate like a brother, he was like the heart and soul of our team, like honestly, because he, he was the one that like turned us up when we were down, you know, get in our ears and tell us like we're not playing hard enough. Um, he was one of the first people to get an offer and to, uh, to, to prepare to sign his letter of intent to go to Western Colorado. Um, you know, the more and more I thought about it, the more and more, um, you know, I was so happy for him that you know, he had finally like accomplished his goal and overcame so much to be able to go to to school for free. You know, have a scholarship and everything. It just, I don't know. There's not not a lot to say about it. It's just, it's just really sad. And you know, um, something I just wish didn't have to happen. He taught me so much in like that short period of time. I don't have any brothers, and he's like definitely. I looked up to him as a. Uh, uh, older brother like I went to him with life advice all the time and it was more than basketball one time I remember uh, I was walking up to go to school and I had went we had I had ran into Nate and I was like he was like where are you going I'm, like, I'm about to get something to eat at McDonald's and I was like I only got two dollars though he was like man you want something to eat I'm like yeah I said I'm about to go to McDonald's I only got two dollars he's like do you do you want something to eat I'm like what are you talking about? He's like, bro, just call me if you want some meat. I'm like, all right, bet. So we walked down to the taco shop. He's like, get what you want, man. He got me whatever I wanted. So I was like, 
So yeah, all right, bro, I'm, I'm messaging you, man, I'm messaging you, you know what I'm saying? The, and the bigger the bigger picture of that is like, you know what I'm saying, he'll always look out for you, like, no matter what. Like, if he don't got it, he's gonna make sure that you he finds a way for you to get it, you know what I mean? Like, whatever you need, he'll go through, he'll go through hell and back, really, you know what I'm saying? Just to get, just make sure you're all right. You know what I'm saying? We just met, and that's, what it, that's the person he was throughout the whole season. We just had met at the beginning of the season, so. I just know, like, if he was still here, he'll still be that person for life, like, just taking care of everybody, making sure everybody's all right. On that painful morning, the angel was born. Heaven gained a champion. And with heavy hearts, Nate Edwards still lives through the memories and the love. A beautiful soul is never forgotten. And in the arms of God, a life will always live. The love will always shine. to the 2017 3C2A state champs. Thank you for your hard work and commitment. And thank you for loving me back almost as much as I love each of you. And uh, to the part that they will wait for, we got some uh, rings. What helped me frame it all was knowing how much Nate was all in on this program. I mean, he adored every guy in this program. He adored every coach and vice versa. We all adored him. Um, and he was all about this team. I mean, he, he would stay up all night thinking about it, talking about the, the team and to anybody that would listen. Uh, what we needed to do. What, I mean, he, he was just so all in on this, on this brotherhood. Um, that that made it okay for me to celebrate that moment um, because I knew he was thrilled. He, he, and he would have been thrilled had he been with us. That, I mean, he would have been the happiest. He would have had the biggest smile out of it. He would have been the loudest. He would have been the most obnoxious. He would, he would have been the most boisterous in the group. And so that made it okay for me to celebrate that moment um, and, not, and not carry the grief. Steven, I get my eyebrows waxed every week. Not least, we're gonna take a picture. Um, obviously, there's a member of our of our family that's not here, uh, Mr. Nate Edwards. Uh, and we'd like Amber to come up and, and accept his ring. Um, so it was it was special, and and again, I I don't look. I don't look back on it with sadness because he would have been the most thrilled. I mean, he was the most thrilled. I mean, you know, and and, and then receiving those rings, he would have been the happiest. And so I, I hold on to those thoughts. The Knights got their championship ring, and now with the school year over, there was one more stage to cross for the sophomores moving on. said we had, I believe it was six, six of our eight sophomores got degrees. Uh, one of our sophomores already had a bachelor's degree. Uh, another one was completing requirements in the summer. Um, but we had a 
good group of our sophomores get degrees and that's what it's about, you know. Um, these guys having success in the classroom, on the court and in life. I remember dudes telling me specifically, if you go to City College, you won't be eligible, you won't be this, you won't be that. They're just gonna, Coach Mitch is gonna do this and do that. But you feel me? Huh. I don't know, I felt like my time at City was great, you know. Two undefeated state, or uh, conference championships and a state title, bro, what? First time in San Diego, let me put that on there too, you know. That That's just like winning, is watching our guys graduate, you know, I mean, um, it's it's such a, gosh, I mean, you know, you're like a proud dad, you know, and, and, and the whole coaching staff, I mean, it's, it's emotional to watch your guys, you know, not only win it, but then they're they're moving on, you know, to to fulfill their dreams. I mean, that's their that's their dream is to to graduate and, and hopefully receive a, an athletic scholarship to to play at the next level and, and see where that might take them and get their get their bachelor's degree and, and move on from there. And, With their championship smiles and with heavy hearts, there was only one way for the Knights to spend their summer break. The hardest thing about winning a championship is, is, is the next year, because um, hopefully no one comes in thinking that it's easy or thinking it's gonna be a cakewalk or thinking like the last year team did it, we don't have to work hard and, and we'll do it too. No, we gotta work even harder because there's teams working harder, if not, Hard, working as hard, if not harder than us, to win, just like we did, so. With a new season on the horizon, the team added new family members. And just like the year before, the Knights are ready for it to begin. Knowing what they did last year, with winning the championship and having that feeling in high school, I never really had got the feeling of winning CIF or getting a ring with my brother, so I always wanted to have that feeling. That was. Uh, and a big factor on me coming here, wanting to repeat that and do that again, which is even better. I, I feel like I can, like me and my fellow returners, we can just take all the freshmen and new beginners under our wing, you know, show them how Coach Mitch is and how things are expected to be done, instilling that culture as a team, making, giving ourselves that night identity. Our team's gonna be definitely different. Um, a lot of people can can shoot, so we got a lot of shooters on the team, which is gonna be good because the lane's gonna be wide open. Um, and then I think that we have a lot of uh, you know hungry, um, talented players that are that are coming in, and we're just gonna kind of get right back to the same thing, just doing it a little bit differently. But definitely trying to go back to back, and definitely trying to um, you know make history in that way too, because um, you know that's the only thing we can do going forward at this point. I love being on that team that everybody's looking at looking to beat, one to beat, because I want, I want to play everybody giving their best shot, giving their all, just to beat us. I just love that feeling, because it just motivates me to just show them that they can't and they won't.
Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah,